Force on Force features the largest and strongest outdoor military organization in the country. These are the men and women who make it possible to enjoy the freedom to hunt and fish. It is with great pride that we bring you Force on Force podcast, coming to you from the Force on Force talk. Hey, welcome to the Force on Force podcast. I'm your host, Sean Dalmo. We're here in the Force on Force talk. We've enjoyed this throughout the year, and I know we've taken a couple weeks off. There's a reason for that. I have lost my voice up until pretty much hadn't got it back here in the last couple of days. We talked a little bit about me being here in the shadows of uh, Churchill Downs and going to the Kentucky Derby and had some connections with my brother-in-law. I didn't talk so much. Went back and listened to the podcast. I didn't really tell you guys who my brother-in-law was, but we're going to talk a little bit about that in the podcast and kind of talk about what cool kind of happened from that. And we're going to bring on somebody who's been around the organization for a long time been a lot of Force on Force TV shows. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, and that's Roy Lane. We refer to him as senior. He's really our operations manager. How you doing, Roy? I'm doing great, brother. How you doing? And really, he fits into what the topic is we're going to kind of talk about. We're going to talk about our program boat from Skeeter, I and mean, he was an integral part in bringing it up here and kind of got the experience coming up here to Kentucky for the not the first time being up here to my house, but no, really, it wasn't. The, but the first time we kind of got to do some fun stuff and, and, and what was kind of the celebrate and some things we kind of learned while we were up here. So it was a lot of fun. And he, I uh, told him, I said, Hey, we, we sold the program boat and we had to deliver it to North Carolina and, you know, he drove it up here. So fun time to have you guys come here, here to the house. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a good trip. You know, me and my wife Run up there to Kentucky, and she enjoyed it, and we got to spend time with you and Amy. We did, and so talking about that and why I think it's so cool to have Roy in a little bit, we're gonna, I've told you we're going to celebrate and kind of tell you why I kind of lost my voice, and Roy got to be a little bit part of this deal. Well, my brother-in-law is Kenny McPeak, and he won the Kentucky Derby. Not only did he win the Kentucky Derby, but he also won the Kentucky Oaks the day before. First time that's happened since 1952, Trainer has won both the Oaks and the Derby. Put that in perspective for the listeners. There's been five Triple Crown winners in that same amount of time that that's happened. And so I got to be a part of that and kind of celebrate. We talked about how he had been so integral last year in helping me when I needed to pick up my boat from the dealership there in Arkansas. We went to his house and then went up to New York and we kind of... We shared a lot of pictures uh, on uh, on Facebook. Roy, you got a lot of funny messages from everybody about what what's the boss doing? Kind of tell everybody about how that went down. <laughs> He's running around in a pink suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got to go to his sister-in-law's and, and uh, brother-in-law's house and everything and met a lot of people there, a lot of the derby people. And it, it was really nice. Everybody was beautiful there. I mean, we had a good time and we talked, enjoyed each other. Though we had the food and everything. And we just I got to meet a lot of new people. Yeah, Roy's sitting there and, and, and people asking us who we are. And, and me and Roy are usually pretty quiet. And and so I tell them, you know, you know, Kenny's my brother-in-law and, and Sherry's my, you know, sister-in-law, my wife's sister. And Roy goes, I just saw a party and I just stopped in here. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody asked me how I got there. And I said, well, I was just driving by and I seen a party. So I pulled over and walked in. And you so should have we- seen that gal's eyes. That was big as saucers. But, I mean, what we find out when we go to a lot of that stuff is people are always intrigued to kind of hear about what we are doing as part of that. And so what we do with Army Bass, and it was kind of cool to talk to some people, and they were so intrigued to hear what we do. And I, I kind of alluded to that last last episode when we talked about a little bit about from this perspective. And And I'll tell you this. This was the other part about going to the Kentucky Derby. One of the – one of our camera guys – had told me he said, "Hey, several of the the camera people we did I know are are filming the derby, and so if you see him, just say hi." He told me who they were, and he sent me a picture of. Them. Sure enough, I'm like, "There's no way I'll ever see this individual, right?" <laughs> but and we get we get there, and sure enough, it's the first person I see when I walk into Churchill Downs on Friday for the Oaks was was Rick, one of the camera guys that we talked about. And when I found out later after talking to Jared at Deep Four Productions, Rick was actually integral in kind of helping 
um, finalize Jared working with us from Deep Port Productions type deal. So I didn't, I mean, I didn't even know that till we kind of. I didn't got, know that either. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was kind of, kind of cool. Like, who thought? Like, and then the second person I run into is somebody that that we see have been at the expo in Indianapolis for two years that we <laughs> operated with up there. So we're seeing all kind of fishing people at Derby because it's just such a big deal and so to get to go be a part of it and then get to experience it from my family to for that huge deal and so what's what's kind of cool with this whole thing and we're, we're going to talk more fishing stuff and the boat stuff and, and some stuff but because it really ties into horses because we're going to talk a little bit about what roy does this because this is something i learned about roy was up here yeah. but kenny is actually signing some some stuff that is going to be auctioned off at Patriot Sporting Challenge. My brother-in-law is, and it was really cool that he's going to take the time to to do that. And then a, another item that we're going to do with the gala for Folds of Honor later in the year. And so a really cool deal that he is. He's just a very humble guy, and I mean, he works really hard. He is. It, you wouldn't you wouldn't know it by meeting him. I mean, he's just down to earth. I mean. <laughs> We're going to try to get him on the podcast. I didn't want to inundate him, and I'd lost my voice with that first week, and it was kind of like, hey, how do we give him a little bit? Because I didn't, he was getting hit up so much, and, and and part of it is, you know, giving him a little bit. Because, I mean, from the time he won, they were out. He was getting phone calls and asked, hey, are you going to run into Preakness? And they had to make a decision, and uh, the best story was, so we are all dog people. I mean, you guys know this, Archer is on the show and, and and that was the other thing roy got to bring archer's girlfriend willow which is really reason i wanted a, a, a toy mini australian shepherd brought her up here to the house but we're big dog people so sunny is a big old yellow lab that that my brother and sister-in-law have the most lovable big old yellow lab there is right he he's everywhere we are around the house like that's it's just a family icon right and everybody so, knows him too everybody knows him. i don't think there's anybody who didn't know sonny right so they this is a story kenny they called and asked him if he was going to run the, run the preakness and he said well i can tell you this i'm not going to do it if i can't bring my dog with me and so they sent him <laughs> by the next day they had an embroidered bed for sonny for the Preakness, for him to be up there at the Preakness, so I thought that was pretty cool. You know, his first thoughts were like, "Hey, I'm not. I know I just went to Kentucky Derby, but if I can't take my dog with me, I'm not. I'm not going up there." So it was pretty cool to to see that bed. Yeah. And it was like that's pretty cool. But I'm hoping as we get a little bit of time, we'll get to have him because it kind of is cool to kind of talk from a perspective of other sports and to see like just like we talk from fishing and hunting, how much hard work he's put into what what he's done and he's done it from really from a blue collar type environment and i think that's what was really special about making history the way he did it i I went back and watched the press conference and listened to him and and just the way he his approach to everything i think is really that's why he's so down to earth i mean he would uh he it was really cool to listen to all that unfold and we're hoping that at some point he and i can get together and kind of do this when our schedules are not so you know going crazy but it was cool because we got the one that's gonna be <laughs> i know right well it may just be one of those where i just have to go back to new york and go fishing up there you know that's that's <laughs> I'm have to, I have to sneak in your back pocket then yeah yeah we'll just go up there and go fishing and visit him up there in new york and it's it'll be a fun trip so getting to do getting to see that so just from that perspective to you He's going to, you know, what he's doing for us for Patriot Sporting Challenge is going to be really, really cool. And we got that coming up here really, really shortly. Really going to help out Folds of Honor. Yeah, they are. They're going to help out Folds of Honor. And that that's a big deal. And he's got a heart of gold. And I think that's really everything that we do. You know, they never, they never, they never batted an eye about doing it. I mean, it's just, that's just the kind of person he is. And so we, you know, we were, we wanted to have the guys from Force on Force on this week from both championship boats on this week but the scheduling has just been kind of crazy so the plan is really next week to get those guys on we'll get back to talking regular stuff which has opened up this us to kind of talk this but we here's the reason we i wanted to bring roy and we joke about are we ever going to bring roy on the podcast because if you ever been around this man he has no <laughs> filter like whatsoever so it's always you always joke about we get to give him the microphone and let him talk but I mean, that's, we, one, that's the reason I'm kind of slow tonight. I got to think about what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about, you know, 
I know this, and I think this is really, really cool. What I kind of learned this this past week of him being up here, we're doing we're going around doing all kind of fun stuff, and we're 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 experiencing showing him around this part of the country. You know, getting to, to visit some some of the different things that Kentucky has to offer, and and the last what was the last three or four years of your career, you were the the uh, first sergeant for the horse detachment there at Fort Hood, Texas. Yes, last mounted active duty mounted cavalry unit left. So he has a he has a long connection with horses, and so it was kind of that's why I thought it was kind of cool that he got to come up here and kind of experience that because I'm like, hey, you come up here and get to kind of celebrate something that has to do because I know that's kind of a passion to him, and you know he did horses in rodeo stuff when he kind of got out. People don't realize how much I mean Roy had appreciation for how much work work went into that because he kind of understand saying that. But this is what mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to talk about, and I think this is where really cool i i did not know this and and this was really cool so we were talking and we're, we're going around and you know you get to do a lot of cool things in the military and we talk about this a lot throughout the throughout the things that we get to do whether it's fishing hunting just the people you meet the things that you get to do and I th- and so we're just having this discussion and so he tells me i don't remember if it was you or a little bit tells me about the, one of the things he gets to do when he's doing you know this job he is his last job he's in the army and so i don't want to tell still too much of your thunder but the premise of it is it's a lot of we do you know whether it's staff rides or you know ceremonial things that we do all the time throughout, throughout the military but i kind of want you to share the listeners the one that i think is pretty <laughs> much awesomest thing that, that i've heard in a long time because people when you put it into perspective you know, the Battle of Little Bighorn. Kind of share that with the listeners and what that was like and how that all came together and, and the significance of that. Well, how, how it comes together is First Cab has a reunion every year. And so every other year it's at Fort Hood or whatever they want to call it now. But then on the off years, they always go to different states. So that year we happened to go to Montana. And it was in with buying horses for the horse detachment. The week prior, so we bought horses and we went over to the reunion and everything, and we did a trail ride with a bunch of uh, old cab soldiers. And there's about, I guess there's probably about seven of us in a wagon, and we did the we did Custard's trail all the way to Battle Bighorn. I got to ride on top of Crow's Nest when I was there. Sitting Bull's great great grandson rode in our wagon all the way he was a prisoner of war vietnam war and they gave him a medal up there when we finally got there we was the first soldiers in over 100 years to be on the battle of little bighorn you know and that was that was an honor in itself yeah that's just pretty cool i, I know that was like really when you think about it like you put it into perspective and and i get to say this all the time and we get to do some pretty cool stuff and I've done it, but I, I don't know that I've done. That's like, <laughs> we just, that's like the guys from the 101st drinking, you know, wine on top of Hitler's uh, chateau and, you mm-hmm. know, Austria type, type thing right there. You know, that's, those are the things that, you know, that are pretty special that, you know, they make movies about and things like that. And I think that's really I don't think we had ever, we've never talked that story at all in anything we've done. No, I, I just don't say too much about about my career at all, really. I mean, I, I'm kind of quiet about it, you know. I mean, somebody asked me, I'll tell them, you know. It just That's the way I was brought up in the ranks, you know. You, you work, you do your job and go on. You don't brag about it. You don't talk about it or anything. I know, and I think that's what was cool about you coming up here. So we... We we get he's bringing this skeeter boat. He thinks he's just coming up here to bring this boat up here, and he gets around this talking about horses, and the, and we get the story out of him, right? And that we would have <laughs> never gotten out of him ever, ever. You know, we don't we he's never has told the story, and and we I mean he's told it people, but he's just never around us. He's never kind of told the story, and we get the story out of him. We're like I'm just like. I'm like, I'm like in awe. Like, and I, and I have people tell me about things I've done all the time, but I'm like, in awe of like, <laughs> I'm like this story. I'm like, I'm like, you, you know, cause people to put it in perspective, I mean, and correct me wrong. That's Indian land still correct. Yes. Where, and so like, that's just not something that the, 
everybody, anybody or anything, especially U.S. military personnel is allowed upon because, you know, it just from treaties to the way the reservations are and the things like that. So it, you just can't imagine what, what it was down there. Right. I mean, you know, everybody can walk up top and, you know, they got their view and, you know, where they can look down on the battlefield. We rode into the battlefield and that was what was amazing. Right. And that's that's what you talk about. That's hollowed ground. You know, you're sitting there and you're like it's sacred ground. You know, you're you're there and and just from from everybody to you know, they made movies and books have been written about, you know, that whole deal and and to get to experience it. And not just that, but to, to have, you know, sitting crows great great grand or great grands or great great grandson with bulls. The city bulls, city. yeah, yeah. I kept saying, I'm not because the crow's nest y'all were riding around on up there, mm-hmm. but, this, but sitting bull's great great grandson up there. I mean, just to have him with you, who had you know later fought with the U.S. military, and then to get him and take him and do the metal piece. It, I mean, that's just kind of a perspective that I mean, that's just kind of some of the stories that we've kind of wanted to share sometimes that we don't get to share on the TV show. Uh, we share a lot of cool stories, but I think that's what kind of makes it what we do from, you know, the Force on Force brand to talk about, you know, getting to c- come do that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, being with Army Bass, I'm Larry Buck Hunter, Hog Hunter, Duck Hunter, Redfish, and all of them is just amazing. I mean, you the people you meet – or the people that you forgot about that you served with, and all of a sudden they just pop up and go, "Hey, remember me?" <laughs> you know, wasn't it? Was it? Was it you that that we were at a show and somebody came by that, or was it Chuck that it, I can't remember which one of those? I know Chuck was one of the guys. He was a drill sergeant, and one of his privates came by the booth, but I couldn't remember. Didn't you have that? Was that was that Duck uh, Lim, Duck Unlimited one was there? Yeah, he came by and said, "You were my drill sergeant." Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was one of the best ones. Chuck Chuck Guthrie, he's a, he was a drill sergeant for quite some time, and some soldier former former trainee came by and recognized <laughs> him. He was like, "You were my drill sergeant," and so you know that's that's the kind of you know impact from young to old that you have with just our members to all the service members across, and we hear just some of the funny stories to. The talk, some of this stuff. So I think that's really I mean, cool. The things we hear and see and, and relive, you know, from all our old battle buddies and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's some cool stuff. We all, you know, we always talk. It's really we. What's funny is you always find like you're always like one degree separation from this person knows this person, and you know we know that person, mm-hmm. and it's so like it's like you know we. We are just everybody's so interconnected that it's not even it's not even funny that we we don't don't kind of you know realize how connected we are sometimes it's a big military but in the end it's not really big from it's the one percent you know the one percent of us out there that's exactly what it is i mean we're worldwide in the people you run into and then you run into you know just on the lake yeah yeah well, it's like, so, if I, you know, it's, and it's funny how the military connection goes. So you brought the boat up here today to me, or not today, but last week. And, and I actually delivered the boat today, and we're we're doing this podcast. It's might get back late tonight. But I actually got, we got, I drove it to Huntington, West Virginia, and met them. And we were going to go inside the bank and, 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 and use the notary inside the bank. And so this guy pulls up. His fisherman, older gentleman, pulls up and starts talking to me. And then we're like, we talked to him for a while. And he was like, well, we got to go inside, do some notary stuff. And he goes, he goes, you need a notary. He's like, I'm a, I'm an attorney right here. He said, I'll go back and get my stamp book. And he's like, I'll do your notary for you right here. So we get to talking. The guy had served, right? This is and so you just, it's funny how you immediately connect to those people. So he had, we get to talking about, stuff and he asked me about something and then and i he said you ever been to fort benning i go yeah he goes so you know about sand hill and harmony <laughs> church and i go oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> we know all about you know so you when you've been to those places and it doesn't take that long to connect 
those stories to do it and uh, it was kind of kind of cool we, we were making somebody happy with a zx 200 beautiful boat that went out today but still got to connect with somebody that boat alone just helped us connect with somebody that was a former service member that i never would have met ever just traveling across and and you know the to meet somebody like that from another generation to share stories it's just kind of cool it's kind of like when i was what was it yesterday i was at the chamber converse lunch in and, and i met a marine he just happened to start a non-profit you know for homeless soldiers you know not wanting them on the street you know buying trailers and campers and everything and putting them up and I mean, we, we sat and talked for a long time you just never know who you're going to meet you, you never know who you're going to meet, and we, we come across a lot of people, and it's just fun to kind of talk with them. That's, that was, like, kind of the fun thing. Like, that's, like, that's, you know, I, I talked about Chris Brown last time we were on the podcast, that when I went to New York up there to go fishing and around the horse racing people, the people were so enamored to come take pictures of the boat and talk about the fishing stuff and everything else. And the, and the, But it's really the military service that kind of drives people to want to have those those conversations and i think it's and that's mm-hmm. what's kind of special you telling your story with us on this on this episode because you know we we joke about it especially on the tv show i mean it's crazy because there's very few seasons we go through where someone who doesn't do an interview at some point there's not some tears shed along the way about oh, yeah. about, <laughs> about you know you know we do the military moments those are those are some of the best ones that we do and, and to share the the kind of pull the curtain back. And I think that's what we kind of, you know, your visit may have been up here to kind of talk about, you know, the visit may have been up here to bring the boat and and kind of spend time for us celebrating with my brother-in-law. But at the same time, it helped me learn a really cool story <laughs> that now we have captured in a way that, you know, a lot of people may not know that, you know, may have not ever heard that piece, you know, and may not know that 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 actually had had taken place. And and, and not only that, but they don't know that there's a horse cavalry detachment at Fort Hood, you know, and that, that's just the cool thing. No, that, there's a lot of people that still don't know it, you know, when they they get there and they go, really, I can ride horses? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, army? and so there's all these things that that we open up. I always say, I I get asked. I did an oral history interview when I was a major about my time as a company commander. And I, I did it because I wanted to preserve what my guys did as when they came back years later, that it wouldn't mean something to some of those privates and specialists as much as it will years down the road, because years down the road, they'll be able to pull that up and, and relive and re, mm-hmm. re, re able to be like, and that and and I said that in an interview because I wanted and that's kind of a lot what we do with the military moment is be able to tell those stories and to help people. For one, just the, the people that don't ever get to do it to, you know, uh, open a little bit of, you know, window to see what we go through, but also to give a chance for others to 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 maybe connect or if they were part of that story to relive it type deal. So I think that's kind of cool what we do. See, you you did really good with this, man. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> we, we got you through a whole episode. Hey, hey, it's a lot of fun we've been doing. And I'm actually leaving in the morning, headed down to Alabama. We're going to go and I'm actually going to stop and check a couple of Bass Pro Shops in Cabela's for Lawrence, one of our partners, on the way. And then we got the West Point cadets coming in this week. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I always enjoy that event. That that's just great to have those guys. Sergeant Major is ready to mess with him a little bit. Tiger, he's <laughs> he always, always is. He's this fun deal. So it's gonna be great for us to go down and and do that. We're gonna get down and and do that. I'm gonna do a little bit of doing a charity shoot Saturday down there in Alabama. So I get to have a good time down there. Just do a little time and share share some of the what we do. I got some some cool stuff we're working on actually. Working on some hawk, hawk optics right now on some some guns that that we're we're doing, and so I got to build one out. We shared a little bit on what we did for our our our, our buck hunters uh, social media page, and so I'm going to work on some of those with red dots, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the hunting stuff with those optics here in the next couple of weeks. Now, yeah. if we get towards the third quarter and we get ready to launch the the hog show, which is going to be off the charts, kind of cool. So yeah, uh, I'll be at the NRA convention this weekend yeah. talking to a lot of partners. And yep. You're going to be the NRA people. 
NRA convention. I know Patrick's going to be there. We're all over the world doing stuff. I know that the Redfish guys are doing stuff this weekend, next weekend. And then we got we got Pedro's Sporting Challenge. So we're going to put up, you'll see, you go on our social media, you'll see ways to bid on auction items for the Patriot Sporting Challenge that supports Folds of Honor. One of the big things that are going to be on the Patriot Sporting Challenge deal is going to be a hunt with me in Kentucky here at the the farm here. And it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be an archery hunt. So if you want a chance to win that, you can get on there. There's a side-by-side given by Skeeter that's going to be on there. All kind of cool things from guns, you name it. You can win on the online auction. And you don't have to be present there at the event to do it. And so everybody can get on involved to support. No, get cause. on there and help us out. Yeah, you have to support a great cause. And so that's going to be great. Hey, I appreciate everybody listening. If you want to know more about Army Bass Lanyard's buck, duck, or hog, or redfish, go to forceonforcetv.com. And hey, Roy, thanks for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Cool. All right. Cool. Nice talking to you, brother. Thanks for listening to the Force on Force podcast. Join us next time as we dive into more topics from the Force on Force talk. For more information or to learn how to join the organization, visit our website at forceonforcetv.com.